What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited. Trust me when I say that Yosenju is coming back in today's video and I think this is the format where it's been better than it has been in the last few formats because you can abuse some of the most powerful cards against today's metagame. Now I know I'm hyping up Yosenju and again I'm not going to tell you this deck is going to go to a YCS and win a YCS or win a regional. However I think this is the most powerful it's been in a while but if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. What are you guys doing if you're not subscribed? We upload five days a week here on Spanko. You guys already know duels, deck profiles, combo videos, product openings, all that good stuff we upload five days a week, like I said. So I appreciate every single one of you guys. I'm really excited to get into this deck profile. I don't want to hold you up for too long. So with that, let's get into the deck profile. All right, so let me get into the deck profile now because I'm very excited to be showing off your Senju, especially in today's format, funny enough. I've been testing and you guys can see that there's a lot of anti-meta cards that I'm going to be explaining in today's video. But this deck is low-key underrated because it can abuse a lot of these really powerful cards. So first things first, if you guys have watched any of my other Yosenju videos, Videos, you guys know the ratios that I like to play and that's three Yosenju comma one, three Yosenju comma two, three Yosenju comma three, as well as two Yosenju Suji. These are the ratios that I really like. I wouldn't change these up at all. I think these are the best ratios. And for anyone who's new to Yosenju and hasn't seen this deck before, all of them have the same effect. Well, when they're normal summoned, you can normal summon another Yosenju from your hand. And then they each have their own effects. Comma one lets you bounce a card your opponent controls. Comma two lets you attack directly with it. And then comma three says when you do damage with another Yosenju, it can search your Yosenju to your hand. So this card is really good as well. They're all all really good in their own sense and that's why you're playing Sujik as well because Sujik is also really good in the sense of it doesn't have the effect where if you normal summon it you can normal summon another one however it does give one of your Yusenju monsters a thousand attack boost which is really really powerful because it helps you go for game sometimes and as you guys can see the whole point of this deck is trying to make your opponent not be able to make a board whatsoever this deck especially into tier element and even into sprite is so so powerful and those were the two decks that I decided to focus around when building this deck because that's where the meta is probably going to shift to but on top of that even if you think a lot about the punk decks the adventure decks a lot of them want to mill with the chaos ruler and i'm not gonna let them do that so we're gonna get into that when we do but i just want to say that this deck is really focused on beating pretty much everything in the meta right now so that's it for the yosenju lineup for the draw package we are playing three extravagance as well as two pot of duality now i'm playing extravagance over prosperity because you guys don't really need the extra deck in this deck so you can afford to get rid of the cards in your extra deck but on top of that it's just really good when you're drawing extra cards especially because this deck does want to go first let me say that this deck definitely wants to go first and for that reason the more cards in your hand the better because if you can set up two to three of your trap cards set and ready to go you're pretty much in a winning position from there because a lot of these traps that we're playing are just blow against the meta right so that's the whole point of this deck is just blow your opponent out and so extravagance lets you do that because extravagance essentially lets you dig deeper into your deck so does duality so you're playing these five and then we're playing the one called by the grave called by the grave is obviously just an insane card overall you have to be playing this as well as two to fire formation tanky because tanky searches any one of your usenjus so it's pretty much more usenju names for you now let's get into all the really broken cards we're playing three dimension shifter yeah we're playing three of this now this card is insane in today's format now the obvious thing is okay dimension shifter is into tier element is really good because tier elements can't do anything under shifter but sprite has a pretty hard time playing through it as well because yes they can still go into gigantic sprite or sprite elf however they can't get their frog combo off because their monsters will never be hitting the graveyard and a lot of different builds are playing the halka fibrax plays but you can't really do that under shifter either i mean i guess you could but they would be losing a lot of resources under shifter so shifter is just a blowout card and if you think about anything else that could potentially be in the meta stuff like punk adventure stuff like despia stuff like that can also be really affected by dimension shifter so this card is insanely nuts but not only are we playing just a dimension shifter we're playing one dimensional fissure as well as one macro cosmo guys we are not letting our opponent's cards hit the graveyard in this deck because the graveyard is just way too powerful in today's format now we could be playing Playing DD Crow as well. I didn't want to play DD Crow because I did want to focus on playing some more traps. However, DD Crow is a really good side deck option in this deck. If you guys want to see a side deck, I can just explain it to you guys real quick what it would look like at the end of the video. But for now, I can just tell you guys we do not want our opponent's cards hitting the graveyard. The really nice thing about the Yusenjus is at the end phase, they all come back to your hand. So you're never going to actually be worried about these cards specifically going to the graveyard. So you're always going to out resource your opponent if you have Fissure 
or shifter or macro cosmos on the board you're always going to be able to out resource them so these cards are insanely powerful in today's format and a deck like yosenju can really abuse them and then we're playing three goes in match now goes in match specifically is really good for the sprite matchup but it's also really good overall like the sword soul matchup it's really good into it's really good into the punk matchup it's pretty good into the despia matchup as well because they play lights and dark so they have a kind of hard time playing around goes in match as well so goes in match is just really really good but specifically because sprite folds to this card like this card is just so insane this format so you have to be playing three goes in match and again the really cool thing is you can only control one attribute but all your yosenju monsters are wind so it does not matter you can play around this card so well and that's the best part about this deck is the fact that it can abuse all these really really powerful cards all these blowout cards i know i said it earlier but these cards like think about it if you go shifter in a t against a tier limit player they're not doing anything if you're setting up fissure plus a goes in match against a sprite player they're not doing anything but you can set the same board up against a punk player or against a sword soul player and they're not going to be able to play through it either so that's why this deck is actually low-key insane right because you can abuse some of the most powerful cards in the game right now and then we are just playing some generic traps so these are more like floodgate cards but the generic traps we're playing three imperm imperm is really good obviously acts as a hand trap for you this deck kind of does struggle going second a little bit so for that reason imperm is just makes it a little bit better going second but shifter is also really good because as soon as your opponent starts their turn you're gonna go shifter and then they're gonna have a hard time playing regardless so shifter and imperm are really the only plays that you have going second otherwise this deck kind of does struggle but that's why we're playing the three imperm of course then what did i say earlier we're not letting our opponent's cards hit the graveyard so for that reason we're playing two different dimension ground this turn any monster sent to the graveyard is banished instead this card essentially is your second and third copies of macro cosmos but the really nice thing about these is that they're normal trap cards which means you can get them off of your trap trick which is very very powerful right and the nice thing with trap trick is actually we'll get into that when we get into that i'm getting ahead of myself because this deck is just so so good but trap trick is obviously really important in this deck then we're playing two second as well as the scythe again very anti-meta card really good into a lot of the meta so we're playing that two storming mirror force a lot of people don't play around the battle phase and storming mirror force can just ball your opponent as well but then let me get back to trap trick so we're playing three trap trick right and the reason why three trap trick is really good is because trap trick says is that after you activate it for the rest of the turn you can only activate one more trap card so that being said the really cool thing about this deck is because four of your traps here are actual like floodgates essentially you can actually start your opponent's turn by flipping like a goes in match or flipping the macro cause and then flipping the trap trick to get into like a sanctum or to get into an imperm or to get into a storm and mirror force and then you have that set up right away so the really cool thing about this is that it synergizes really well with the floodgates because you can activate your floodgates first not having to worry about them leaving the field because they're going to stay on the board and then after that you can activate your trap trick to get into some of your other blowout ones like your different dimension ground or your sanctum sanctum is obviously a very very good card to set up right and if you're sitting on a goza match and you set up a sanctum you don't have to flip the sanctum right away keep that in mind because a lot of the time is like if they can't play through the goza match anyway then you're in perfectly fine position so you can just sit on the sanctum until you need it or if until they have the out of the goza match and that whole time you're going to be summoning your senju monsters and doing a bunch of poke damage one by one so that's a really cool thing about this deck is that it controls the format and it controls the game state so well and i don't know man i think this deck is really cool the fact that i can just play all these blowout cards against pretty much everything in the meta so that's it for the main deck it's a 40 card Card main deck i didn't want to go above 40 i wanted to keep it crisp at 40. so for the extra deck here the extra deck is not that important again we barely go into it but we're playing three cowboy cowboy for game does come up actually funny enough this is probably the thing that comes up the most however it just doesn't work under goes and match but a lot of the time if you go like different dimension ground with like a macro cosmo your opponent has a tough time playing you go d shifter whatever it is you do a bunch of poke damage with your senjus and then you go cowboy for game so this does come up you definitely want to be playing three cowboy three tornado dragon now you guys are going to See, the ones we're playing here are just monsters that are wind that we can go into with goes and match so three tornado dragon we're playing two lightning chidori again wind monsters here that we can go into we have two zeus if this ever comes up with like you know the tornado or the lightning chidori you can make zeus you have two baguska baguska is also still really good in today's format again i'm not going to explain these too much because you barely go into them cowboy is probably the one you go into the most and then we're playing one emerald emerald is just really cool because it's a wind monster specifically that you can go into but for any reason if you're using monsters go to the graveyard and you're starting to lose your resources emerald just pretty much fixes that for you so emerald is really powerful and then we're playing two doom eagle doom eagle is actually one of those really cool cards that i think people are not playing in this deck or not thinking of i'm just going to explain this one a little bit because i think people might be wondering why would you play doom eagle when you don't want your yosenjus to go to the graveyard that's true however there's a lot of times where doom eagle can actually just be game for you and the reason i say that is because it has the effect where it gains 2400 attack when there is no monsters in your opponent's graveyard and as you guys can see when you're playing shifter fissure 
Cosmos, and Different Dimension Ground, your opponent is probably not going to have a lot of monsters in their graveyard, if any at all. And so for that reason, this becomes 4800 attack, and sometimes this is just something you go into to go into game. And then on top of that, it also has a really cool quick effect, where if your opponent does have a monster in their graveyard, you can target a monster in the graveyard and pretty much shuffle it back into the deck. So that's really, really good with this, because if you're going against a tier limit matchup, for example, and you make this, even if you don't OTK your opponent, you can just sit on this, because now this card makes it so that they have a tough time playing through it. So that's why I think this card is really, really good it's something that doesn't come up too too often but it can come up and when it does come up it's really really good so just before we end the video here i do want to talk a little bit about a side deck i don't have a side deck here but i just want to give you guys some ideas so first things first is goes and match is not really good into the tier limit matchup two cards that i think should really be in your side deck and you should probably max out on both of them is you should be playing three dd crow and three soul drain because in the tier limit matchup goes and match is not going to do anything for you but if you are going to choose to go first let's say you lose game one or let's say you win game one lose game two you're going into game three goes and match is one of those cards you want to side out and you can side in soul drain soul drain is insanely powerful against that deck so you're going to be playing three soul drain three dd crow those cards are really good now again you do need your normal summon for your send juice however the really cool thing is you're not focused on otking your opponent so you guys can play cards like lava golem or wing dragon of raw sphere mode to break any potential sprite boards when you're forced to go second these cards that i just mentioned to you sphere mode lava golem dd crow soul drain you guys should be playing all of these cards in your side deck because again going first you're going to be pretty much winning everything going second is the issue and that's why we're playing sphere modes or crows stuff like that right so just keep that in mind you guys can play board breakers in your side deck but the cards that i mentioned are really important i think you guys should keep those in mind but yeah this is a deck 40 cards in the main deck i'm very very happy with this list i think this list is very very powerful i don't think i would change it up at all if you guys have any suggestions let me know but trust me guys try it out for yourselves so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy this is my take on your senju for today's format like i said earlier some of the most broken cards you can abuse in this deck against the metagame which is really cool because a lot of decks can't really take advantage of all these really really powerful cards so for that reason i think yosenju is in the spot that it hasn't been in a long time it's a really really powerful underrated anti-meta deck in today's format and i think it can really keep up and compete so if you guys have any suggestions or opinions let me know in the comment section down below that's how we get better together as a community so thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko oh oh by the way like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Make sure you guys do that. What are you guys doing if you haven't subscribed yet? Come on, subscribe. So anyways, with that being said, I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko, sign and out. Peace.